All right, guys, we're back in the shop. I got a Hydraminder 506 in front of me. Had a couple people ask for a rebuild video. So I'm just gonna break this guy down and then put it back together and just give you a quick explanation on what parts and pieces do what inside this valve. So if you don't know what a Hydraminder is, a Hydraminder is a fill valve and it's also a um, dilution valve as well on top of that. So water in the back, our uh, chemical solution into the eductor, when the float when the liquid level in the tank drops, the float drops, you can hear the click. That opens the valve, allows the water to rush in and create a, what's called the Venturi effect as it flows down past the eductor and actually suck the soap from the five gallon bucket or however you're storing that up into the water itself and then mix within the tank. And then from the tank, we send it out to the bed. All right, so let's jump into breaking this thing down. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect my water supply. So out of the back, I'm gonna screw out the quarter turn valve connection. On the top, we have a screw. I'm gonna remove that screw. If you're working at a bench, that's great. I would lay everything out in the order that you take it off. That way you know the order that it goes back on and you can't make a mistake. If you're not, and you're doing it above a soap tank or anything like that, just remember there's some small parts and pieces here. Have something to either put them in or lay them on. That way we don't drop them in the tank and they don't end up into a pump or anything like that. So I got the screw out of the top. I'm gonna take the magnet cover off. I'm gonna take the float arm off move that to the side i'm going to remove the magnet cover and i'm going to take it a second here and i'm going to explain how this valve actually works so as the float arm pulls down on the magnet cover it pulls the magnet against the spring over the armature which would then pull the armature up due to magnetic force, which is going to pull it off of the diaphragm, allowing the water to flow through the valve and create that Venturi effect and mix the chemical within the bucket. So as I break this down even more, you'll be able to see that um, much easier. So magnet, magnet spring, now there's three screws holding this 506 onto the mounting bracket. Just remember that when you take those screws out, that the entire valve assembly is going to be loose. This is where it can get slightly tricky and you could drop some very small parts into that bucket. A piece of cardboard over top of that soap bin is a good trick as well. Just to make sure if anything does fall, it would fall onto the cardboard not down into the bucket. Sometimes I like to live on the edge. Today we're not doing it with uh, any cardboard over top of the bucket. So at this point, the entire valve is loose. What I'm going to do is push on top of the armature guide or the bonnet and push this entire piece down through. Now I'm gonna be able to break this down even more for you so that you can understand how everything works. The easiest way to do this is to flip it upside down. Remember, there is a spring inside here, the armature spring. So everything does kind of want to come apart. I was lucky enough today that the diaphragm came out with it. From the top view, you can see this is our valve body. I'm going to set that to the side. This is our diaphragm. This is what actually closes off the valve body itself. This is our armature. This is what the magnet acts on, guys. So as the magnet slides down, the magnetic force pulls the armature up into the armature guide or the bonnet against the spring, allowing the diaphragm to come off of the valve body and water to flow through. 
when the uh, when the float comes up, the magnet changes state or changes position, thus changing the position of the armature against the diaphragm, closing the valve off. So your armature and your armature spring. I know that's probably hard to see. It's very thin, um, very thin and very easy to lose. So I'm gonna set that down here on the bench. Again, this is the bonnet. So if we were going to rebuild this, I would do it all not over top of the bucket since we have everything loose. Before I do that, I'm just going to re-show you this valve body and this diaphragm without putting it together, all together, to show you how that action actually works. So on the diaphragm, this heavy rubber piece here actually fits into the flow hole. So closing that off, this fits down inside that body like this. Now, if you can picture that bonnet spring and armature in a slide motion up and down, I'm just going to take the armature and show you the armature presses down on the center, thus closing that flow port off. When it's time to fill, it gets pulled up by the magnet and allows the water to flow through. That's as simple as it gets, guys. This is a magnetic valve, up and down, closing and opening that flow port, allowing the mixture to happen into the bucket. So to put this back together, remember that the pointed end of the armature goes against the diaphragm. So I'm going to take the bonnet and flip it upside down. The kit would come with a bonnet, an armature, and a spring. Uh, first, into the, with the bonnet upside down, I'm going to take that armature spring, insert that into the bonnet. Take the armature with the point side facing up. Remember, I have this upside down. So the point side facing up so that the point can connect with the diaphragm. Hold those together. I have the diaphragm already installed in the valve. I'm going to flip that over. You can see that I'm letting the point of the armature meet with the center of the diaphragm coming over top of the valve. Guys, we have successfully rebuilt that whole valve mechanism. So now I'm going to slide that back up into the holder. And this is where we're going to reinstall those three screws. Once you have one in, it'll hold itself up in place. And since I laid my parts out here on the bench, it'll be easy enough for me to just pile this stuff back on. So there's an armature or a valve body rebuild kit. We'll flash that part number for you. And then there's a top mag section, the mag head rebuild kit as well. Um, we're gonna flash that up for you right now. So we're at this point, we're gonna rebuild the mag. I'm gonna take my mag spring. It is in a cone shape. The small portion facing up, down on over top of the bonnet, the magnet itself, the mag cap, our float arm, that the float arm slides into the holes of that mag cap. Our mag cap cover, I'm going to get that lined up with the uh, bonnet and the screw goes down into the bonnet. I'm going to tighten that down. Water connection into the back, turn your water back on. Guys, we're back in business. Best way to test this is to look, look, 
to listen for that famous Hydraminder, the Hydraminder click. As long as you're hearing that click, you know that you have everything positioned correctly and that the flow is going to take place the way that you want it to. If you're not hearing that click, I would recommend that you take, a t take the top portion apart, check your magnet, make sure that all looks good. If it's looking very worn, it might be time to do a top rebuild. If you're getting bad flow through the valve, I'm going to urge you to rebuild the uh, valve body portion, so the bonnet, the armature, the armature spring itself. If you guys are having any other troubles with Hydraminders or need to know more information about chemical mixing or solutions, give us a call here at CleanRight and we'll get you fixed up. Clean right.